matching backgrounds. Cool. We have the same decorator, Ricardo. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I see. Yes, <laughs> yes, indeed. Awesome. These are some of the new uh, backgrounds that got launched for teams. If you weren't aware, I hadn't heard about that. Looks like Stacy cycling through all of them, or she's teleporting throughout find the planet. The one that's like the best color for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what we need is uh, backgrounds that, you know, AI chooses the best background for your, you know, for your look. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good stuff. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Most people are still coming in. Um, but I think we'll go ahead, <clears throat> go ahead and kick this off. All right. Uh, so once again, thanks, everybody, for coming to another Cute for Team session. Champions using teams effectively. I'm Ricardo, you have Stacy, uh, and we're here for you if this is your first time. I don't know that I've scanned the list uh, well, might be some new names there, but if this is your first time, this is basically like office hours or ask me anything, come here with your questions um, or come just to listen. But in either case, Stacy and I try to help, um, you know, with any questions we can help answer. And also just help facilitate conversations with all of us, really. You know, this can certainly be a dialogue, not just a presentation, uh, to talk about uh, teams and collaboration and Microsoft 365 in general. So if you are new, uh, feel free to put things in chat or feel free to come off mute and ask questions as well. We have disabled uh, videos, though. All right. Um, so with that said, certainly, you know, either raise your hand if you want to talk or uh, other than that, I'm checking out the uh, chat. And I do see a question from Glenn about PowerPoint live presentations. Some present some, some presenters want to allow the chat and some do not. But we found that only the organizer can turn the chat on or off or all core uh, co organizers cannot. Is there any way for co organizers to turn chat on or off for all? Yeah, and so um, I, I think the answer is no there. I mean, so co-organizers are great because they do uh, give some additional functionality that you know, even folks on this line in the past have, you know, been clamoring for. So we were all kind of happy when that happened. But you're right, it's still missing some other things. Uh, you know, like, for instance, the co-organizer does does not, uh, you know, own like the meeting invite that that uh, got sent out for the meetings. And a lot of times that's something people are looking for. Hey, I want other people to be able to change this Outlook invite, you know, things like that. So I, I think that uh, chat on and off uh, may, may be one another one on the list of uh, things a co-organizer can't can't do. Uh, that being said, though, in that presentation, at least if that organizer is there, the, the organizer on the behalf of the presenter can certainly turn it on and off on the fly um, as needed. So that's maybe one silver lining. All of those meeting options from the organizer's perspective are available throughout the meeting and on the fly, you know, real time. I, I usually like to stress that point because a lot of times people think I, I got to have all my settings just right at the very beginning um, and then kind of roll with that for the meeting. And it can, you know, you can swap it up, change it up uh, throughout the meeting. So it doesn't necessarily, you know, exactly help your, your the problem you have, challenge you're having there, but uh, hopefully that helps a little bit, uh, Glenn. Any, any, any other, any follow up on that, Glenn, or is that, does that help a little bit? Yeah, thank you. Are you aware of, um, you know, uh, originally we didn't even have co-organizers and it right. was all on the organizer. Then we got co-organizers. Is there anything in the pipeline that might be expanding permissions for co-organizers? Mm, no, I'm I don't not know aware. That I've, yeah, I don't know. I've seen anything per se. Mm -hmm. But we it would can be on be, the lookout and we can certainly um, share that feedback. Yeah, because it would just be easier if the organizer could make all the presenters co-organizers and then when they be begin their portion of the PowerPoint, um, they can turn the chat on or off as they wish. But now the, co co the original organizer has to do it for each person. So, OK, well, thank you. Yeah, I was trying to think if I could think of any other workaround for that. Um, and I really can't. 
despite me despite meeting hopping, which would not be ideal. You yeah. Know. Um, I see a question about is there a formal co-organizer function for teams meetings? Let me uh, I don't know if what I mean, let me share my uh, screen here and just make sure we're on the same page. Uh, GCC. Um, and let's see if I can easily uh, go to a meeting. Because what we're talking about here. Maybe this one has some attendees. Uh, let's let's do this. Let's add someone. And then uh, when I go into the meeting options, either uh, during the meeting or prior, of course, this thing is thinking about it. Hopefully it doesn't think too long. We can set there is a, a drop down for setting who among the uh, uh, presenters, I guess, are are able to be co-organizers. Of course, that's taken forever. Uh, maybe I can just jump in a meeting and uh, show. Let's see, start a meeting. I'm just starting a meet now. And uh, our meeting options are always in the more. And then the oops, settings and meeting options. And there are choose or I, now I just jumped in this meeting by myself, so there's nobody listed, but that's what we're talking about here. Choose co-organizers and uh, normally there would be a drop down with a list of people to choose from to make co-organizers. So that's that's what we're uh, discussing currently. Yeah, excuse me, Ricardo, it's Glenn. Can I jump in yeah. when we um, only the organ when the or only the organizer when they click settings will see meeting options it, it doesn't even appear for co-organizers they can't right. get to meeting options right right yeah so this is a organizer uh menu um no uh let's see i'm looking at chat here uh, attendance report was about attendance report for co-organizer believe that's true yep that you can at least get the attendance report um, looking at chat addition uh, additionally if the co-organizer or if the organizer set a meeting series then leaves the org if the co-organizer will be able to delete the meeting series that would be great yes as I, I hear that often about being able to delegate someone else to manage the meeting invite um, particularly in a long-running recurring series so I yeah that's not there today I agree that would be nice uh, Stacy put a link to a team's role matrix uh, in the chat there for us. I'll I'll give a caveat that this hasn't been updated since July 2022, so it's definitely starting to show its age. There's a few new features that aren't reflected here, so we'll do some testing and update this. But for a general reference, um, I think most of this is still right on. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, so keep that uh, bookmarked. You can see it's date handy. at the bottom in the notes. It says as of July 2022. So it needs a little TLC. I'll get it updated. But the majority of what you see there, I would stand behind today, even after <laughs> the releases we've had almost for the nearly the last year. Awesome. And of course, what's also really important about these distinctions, I think, is the a presenter and attendee uh, uh, piece as well. So, you know, for instance, um, in large meetings, you know, you want to ideally as a best practice, you'd want to make everyone an attendee and and specifically uh, designate who's the presenters so that you can have control over things like this, who can speak and share video and things like that. Um, as I as I probably heard me say many times in this forum, uh, you know, we've got enough features here that nobody should have to have a what I call a sloppy meeting, right? <laughs> Where, you know, 300 people are in the meeting and then somebody's off mute, you know, coughing or something. And who's that? Who's off mute? Can you please mute your mic? And all of those things that we 
I think none of us really like to, you know, have to go through in a meeting, you know, we can control that, right? We can kill everyone's mic and, you know, or someone comes on camera and they're, they're not, you know, it's like, why are they, are you going to talk? Why are you there? You know, all of these things. We don't have to deal with that. We can uh, have some more, a little more formal control of those meetings with those meeting options. So this speaks to that as well. Awesome. Chat's on fire today. I'm still uh, <laughs> looking through here. Um, do -do 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 -do. Will an update be posted here? Okay, so yeah, Stacey will keep us abreast of uh, updates to this uh, matrix. Yeah. Most yeah. definitely. It's time. <laughs> Good deal. Yeah, these charts are always super, these kind of, chart, kind of charts are always super helpful because, I mean, you're summarizing tons of, you know, Docs, the documentation. you know, in a, yeah. in a nice visual, you know, so they're easy to share with others, too. Good deal. All right. Uh, let me just let me leave this. Just check and see if my other meeting. OK, just for the sake of actually truly being able to see what I was talking about there uh more settings uh i will say too while i'm here you know the you know we changes little changes happen all the time with the interface you can kind of see some of the things up here that are a little different than you know a few months ago i should say uh i'm not trying to say anything has changed like last week or anything but i will say you know meeting options being embedded in settings and you know that's that's slightly different so um you know, just keep that in mind, even even myself, you know, sometimes I come in here and I got to try to remember where things are. So settings, uh, meeting options and uh, didn't give me a co-organizer for her. Uh, I'm trying to think why that would be. I think I know it works a lot more reliably when uh, you're adding people at the very creation of the meeting than the, this drop down. That certainly works. I'm, I'm guessing adding Deborah after the fact is keeping her out of this uh, drop down. So wasn't able to show exactly how that looks. All right. Um, good stuff there. Let me check the uh, chat. So new in, new in your role and trying to collect resources like this for future use. Is there a good collection like that to pull from other than the normal searching learn.microsoft? Um, yeah, you know, that's a good question in terms of uh, spots where good adoption and best practice kind of materials would be. I'm going to like, I'm going to try to on the fly figure out the URLs of some of the things I want to suggest here. <laughs> the, the, the first one I was, gonna, I was thinking of, I think is adoption.microsoft.com. Am I right? Yeah. All right. So then, and so as you kind of go through here, probably this link here, but you know, there's adoption related stuff uh, across many products, including Teams. So adoption.microsoft.com would be uh, one place I would suggest for that kind of info. I think the other thing I would suggest, and I'll, I think I can use PubSec blog just to get there a lot quicker, but it basically techcommunity.microsoft.com for which as a, if you're a GCC user, the public sector blog might be um, the most relevant, but in, but there is certainly a Teams focused uh, blog here as well. Uh, but this would be another place to come for, uh, you know, good info as well. Then you're right that learn.microsoft.com uh, um, is, is good as well. Um, and uh, I think this probably takes you, I uh, still learn, I was going to say, because the other one that's essentially the official documentation for most of our stuff is docs.microsoft.com. Uh, is that, oh, that took me to learn. Okay. Um, somewhere, if I if I was to click in, on one of these and start diving into documentation, I'm sure that URL would change to docs uh, at some point. Uh, Actually, let me see. Let me just try something here. Da -da -da, and then go. Yeah, like if I go eventually. <laughs> uh, let's try. No, a standalone. Maybe they changed it. Maybe it's not. Maybe the docs isn't there anymore. So, but this is, as you can see, documentation here 
and most of the documentation has this kind of look. So yeah, maybe they changed the um, URL for it. Um, so yeah, learn.microsoft.com. Trying to think, Stacey, if there's any other, you know, good repositories of the, that kind so, of info. So I'm going to throw in one that I am favoriting as of this morning that I just came across. <laughs> Um, it's been out there for some time, but, and maybe we've just, you know, reorganized the way it is, but it's a, um, Microsoft 365 life hacks for organization site. <laughs> so automatically it's got my attention because I need all the life hacks. So I'm going to throw this one in the chat too. Um, it's, do you need the, I threw it in the chat if you want to grab it and, okay. and show it. Um, but it's just some articles around organization. And uh, there's, of course, some hot topic ones that have been posted as of late around chat GPT and things like that. Um, but tips, tricks, how to think about um, the Microsoft 365 tools in new light. And it's not just um, workplace focused, but you can see this one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Go back up a little bit. Go back up. Eight tips for running your home smoothly. Who doesn't need that, <laughs> right? So um, I like that it's kind of holistic in what it says that uh, Microsoft 365 can be leveraged to do. Because believe it or not, I'm a geek at work and a geek at home. <laughs> and I think Ricardo is too. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just, uh, this one definitely caught my attention this morning and I'm going to be spending some time on it and probably sharing it on LinkedIn and and getting some attention around it because I think it does help, especially this time of year. I feel like we're all taking this deep breath because it's, you know, the end of the academic year. If you have kids, it's nearing the end of the fiscal year. If you're on a June or a July to June year, um, it's just this roller coaster before maybe a summer uh, reset. And so this is a good time to be thinking about organization going into the craziness of next year. Um, anyway, that's my spiel about why I think this one is going to be a handy one for me, at least. And I'm glad to have this forum to share it in. Yeah. If anybody on the line, you know, has some um sites that they frequent for info um i'm sure i i, I mean I, I think we're all agreed you know teamwork cowbell.com is probably the the main one you go to right yes of course <laughs> i am also, of, yeah, yeah i'm gonna grab one more sorry okay. um uh, we have a weekly um deck that's posted that looks at all of the team's feature updates for GCC. And so I'll post that link in there too. Most of you are familiar with it, but anyone new to the party should definitely favorite that as well. Putting my hands on that URL now. Okay. Awesome. Ricardo, could you also post the links that you showed? Uh, Stacey, thank you for the links. It's very helpful to have them in the chat. Mm hmm. Okay, so we yeah, can Stacey, just, uh, if you copy. can put yeah, adoption you. and uh, what was it? Adoption tech community. Yeah, PubSec blog. Yeah, yeah, and okay. yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Awesome. Uh, anybody use, uh, if, I mean, if you're talking tips and tricks, you know, some of the social media areas, uh, TikTok and YouTube and Instagram. I mean, it, you know, uh, folks like myself and others that are, you know, doing tips content, you know, we try to go across the different platforms. So sometimes those are great places too. And they'll usually come more in, in smaller tidbits, you know, video format, reels, things like that. Um, but those can, you know, subscribing to folks uh, uh, there could be uh, um, useful. Um, so if you're into that, you can certainly uh, hit subscribe on mine and, and I'm, oops, sorry. It's a little, little loud. Uh, but yeah, subscribe to, you know, any, any of the different platforms that you may be on there as well. Um, and then I see, uh, let's see, I'm looking at chat. Okay. Um, and for large meetings, our team will typically set up a team's. Okay. So that we're back, back to the, uh, organizers thing. Let me just ask real quick. Uh, so, and I see your, 
Um, I think I see your hand up. Was that for something previous? Or do you have a question? That was uh, to request the URLs. Thanks. OK, Thanks, gotcha. gotcha. Appreciate it. All right. And then um, so back related to the large meetings um, suggestion in the chat, we typically set up a team's meeting on someone's calendar and only invite presenters and co-organizers. We then set out send out the join information to attendees using a shared mailbox. This allows anyone with access to the shared mailbox to add or remove attendees. That's a nice tip. So using a shared mailbox, obviously a couple more steps and a couple, a couple moving parts from just your typical uh, meeting invite, but some additional flexibility as a result. So, so yeah, shared mailbox for the for the actual invite. That's cool. Stuff. Uh, see some questions about uh, whiteboard and Teams meetings. Where's my whiteboard from a meeting when I share a, meet, a whiteboard during a meeting stored? I don't see it listed in my OneDrive. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's supposed to be in your OneDrive. I kind of tried it out now. And then the other one, is there a way to share an interactive whiteboard during a meeting that is pre-existing? I know I can set up my whiteboard for a specific meeting or recurring meeting ahead of time, but if I want to share a whiteboard that was created outside of the meeting chat, doesn't seem to be an option. Outside of the meeting chat. Uh, Ricardo, well, it's, it's Glenn. Can I speak up for a moment? Sure. We, we found that in 99% of our people, there is a whiteboard folder in OneDrive that automatically saves the whiteboards. But in 1% of the people, they do not have that whiteboard folder in OneDrive. Something went wrong on their initial installation and their whiteboards are saved in the um, downloads folder, uh, a downloads um, link on Windows Explorer. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's not wrong or bad, but we tell them to contact our tech support to get their install corrected right okay so that's good 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 uh insight because so so yeah one way we can respond to this is to say the way it's supposed to work mm -hmm. it you know is that uh as you saw just now i i started up a meeting i hit share i'm choosing from among pre-existing whiteboards or a new whiteboard um and that all those whiteboards and at least in this example this is my OneDrive. <clears throat> they are all stored there you know in the cloud so that's how it's supposed to work sounds like you know we got confirmation that every now and then it doesn't quite work that way certainly there could be a you know a, a ticket created to you know maybe dive into that, that and you know get that thing fixed but um uh, in general this is how it's supposed to work and the other thing i'd say here too is if uh, for some reason, this integrated sharing, which again, we got to from the share button and then you, this Microsoft whiteboard here, if for some reason that doesn't work, you know, whiteboard can still be shared by actually just firing up, you know, whiteboard itself, which I, don't, I guess I don't have installed on this particular machine, and then just sharing it as a window like you would if you were trying to share an Excel spreadsheet or anything like that. So. So even if that integrated button wasn't there, you can certainly still fire up a whiteboard and still. Now, you wouldn't have everybody's ability to uh, real time interact with that whiteboard, um, but at least it could be shown. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully that helps. Check it out there. And uh, any idea why whiteboards that are created in Teams channels stored in OneDrive and not SharePoint. It seems like Whiteboard be owned by the group and not by the individual. And I get that because you're right, like uh, with recordings, we, that's what we do, right? We, if it's if it's a channel meeting, we record that in, in the SharePoint area. Um, you know, maybe that maybe that's a future enhancement. I don't I don't know, uh, but uh, today it's it's driven by the by the OneDrive. So let me get out of this, stop sharing, get out of there. 
there's my whiteboards there and the app that i was talking about would be uh in the uh app store um and then sign in with your credentials um da -ba -da -ba -da. let's see speak to checking the chat again speaking to getting access to viva learning and guidance on rolling it out to an entire city and county community uh viva learning so St stacy i'm I, I haven't kept up is that is that officially out in gcc uh no not, not yet. yet okay <clears throat> not yet i can't i can at least i'll switch over to my wait no commercial <laughs> what'd you say i said i can't wait though <laughs> oh yeah so what we're talking about though is uh viva learning guys that yeah there um, if you're trying to roll it out to uh, an entire city or county, I'm assuming these are people with license, you know, licensed accounts, because um, I don't know if there's a use case for learning, be learning with, you know, uh, external folks. But um, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, it, yes, this would be available to everyone, you know, that, you know, has teams in your org. Um, great place to keep track of their learnings to to you know post other learnings and then of course there's some LinkedIn learning integration that could be uh, applied as well. So again, we're looking at a commercial tenant. I don't think we have this full rollout yet in GCC. Uh, for, I'm hearing that. I'm hearing that not only is there LinkedIn learning integration possible, but that even um, some of the traditional technical learning management systems are going to have APIs to work very tightly and well with Viva Learning. So if you happen to already be using a LMS system, that doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't be considering Viva Learning too, because um, you can make those features and functions all work together within Viva Learning, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And it, can I just ask a follow-up question to that one, Ricardo? Mm -hmm. So sure. um, I, yeah, I, I'm watching the um, the date for the drop of Viva Learning to the GCC very closely because um, I am a team of one and we have 30,000 learners um, mm -hmm. as part of the city and county community. The thing is, is that our budget has been, our belts are very tight over here um, at the city of San Francisco. And I just wanted to understand what type of guidance um, we may expect from a Microsoft account rep in terms of best practices. Um, it's it's a wonderful resource, and I just want to make sure that it is launched in a way that people are excited and appreciate all the features and the functionality, uh, the ability of managers to assign training in my in, you know in a Teams kind of environment is huge. Mm -hmm. So. I guess that's what I'm looking for is because budget is tight, it's such a great resource. I really would like to understand what is the path for guidance for people like me who are functioning as a instructional designer or a trainer who, who are in charge of an enterprise rollout, you know, like, yeah. do, do you have any insight on that? My first thing I would say is, you know, once learning does hit GCC, there's several roles on the account team that are going to be all over that, right? In terms of uh, helping you with adoption and making sure you know it's there and and so forth. Um, your 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 modern work CSM and uh, uh, modern work specialist, and you know, so you'll you know, I think you'll you'll get some uh, some help with that once that rollout occurs. I was also going to mention too. I don't know if you're a unified enterprise uh, uh, customer, but you know, or unified support, but that also comes with a learning portal and the services hub uh, where you can assign courses. It, you know, it's a combination of uh, aggregating courses that are out on the web for free, as well as some that are specific to um, Unified. So if that if, if you're familiar with Unified Enterprise, Unified Support um, and the services hub, uh, you, you, and I don't have a way to demo that right here, but um, uh, that would be another place for learning uh, material that uh, might be useful and and has a it's not not a replacement for an LMS but it's got a LMS feel and that you can assign and keep track of uh, the users in your org that have um, taken you know a course and you know kind of keep track of their progress so a couple of uh, options there. 
Yeah, and I'll add on that um, the members of your Microsoft team will also have uh, adoption, like they can have some decks they can share with you that you can either take to your executives yourself or they can co-present what's available with Viva Learning to your executives to get um, buy-in and, and increase your your quickness to adoption. It always goes faster and easier when those executives are behind you and in and, and helping getting the word out. They'll probably also have email templates or um, company communicator message templates, things that you can just take, tweak till your heart's desire and repurpose and use within your own organization. So they will absolutely have some assets that are going to help you that you won't have to build from scratch and um, hopefully get that adoption started on the right foot for you to make the most of whatever time that you can personally invest in it to get it out to those 30,000 end users. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Um, we're at time here. I do see one more. Any suggestion on how to convince departments within the county to drop their extra vendors as new pro oh, boy, as new products features roll out in M365 GCC? I, I am with you. Uh, yeah, your account cool. team, your account team's <laughs> with you on that one too. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that may. Um, I, I think you a lean 30 on second answer. Yeah. Yeah. Lean on your account team. Um, they can come in and do some demos for you or at least arm you with some great demo material. And then you can take that and answer whatever use case that is being challenged that someone just really wants to use this other third party tool. You can say, well, did, were you aware that it can be done in Microsoft 365 and give them the, the um, show and tell the show and tell goes a long way. Yeah, yeah. Just know that your account team is aligned to that goal as well, so right. they will certainly uh, support you in any way they can on that one. All right. Uh, so we're a little past here. Um, thanks everybody for joining again, and uh, this will be on YouTube. And uh, we'll see you at the next one. All right. Have a good one. Thanks everybody. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out the blog for more content.